my lovely friends, Jan of Jan Hicks Creates here, coming at you with, I believe it's Floss Tube 139. It might be 140. I don't know. I, I don't have notes. I'm looking a little crooked here. And I'm coming to you from Idaho Falls. Well, not really. A little bit north of Idaho Falls in a little town called Rigby. We weren't able to get room. There was no um, spaces left in the RV park in Idaho Falls. So we are up just a little bit north of that. <sighs> We're here. We made it. It was a trip with ups and downs. Most of it went smoothly. The pictures in the front at the beginning of the video are from our trip up, our pictures and video. Um, I love traveling places I've never been before because, of course, it's all new to me. And it was a it was a gorgeous drive. Um, we met in Salt Lake City with my cousin Wendy and had had a fun just day catching up and chatting and dinner with her. Um, and then on to Idaho Falls. So we got in on Friday here. But let me back up a little bit. Um, the rest of the transition went relatively smoothly. The San Antonio to Phoenix. We did spend two weeks in Phoenix visiting with my father-in-law which was wonderful. We did have a major um, sad moment though. We did lose our big kitty, Sasha. Um, insert a picture here for those that might not remember which one he is. Um, he was our black, our tuxedo. He was the one with diabetes and um, we believe he had a stroke. Um, took him to an emergency vet clinic there. Of course, they could have run tons of tests, but he had lost lost the use of his black back legs. We believe he also lost his eyesight. Um, it just, it wasn't good. So we did make the hard decision to um, put him to sleep. So that was, that was rough. Totally unexpected, of course very rough. We were thankful that it happened while we were there because a few days later we did um, fly back to San Antonio to pack out our storage goods and we were there for about two and a half days with a pet sitter just coming in to take care of the cats for while we were gone just twice a day. So um, yeah, don't even want to think about if it had happened when we weren't there. Nina is, um, she's having a hard time adjusting. <coughs> Excuse me. As much as Sasha and Nina weren't buddies, um, they, it's not like they laid together, or slept together, did anything like that together. Um, mostly, if they did stuff together, it was fighting. It's still, you know, she's never been alone. He was her litter mate, and we got them, you know, together. So um, she's every once in a while she'll wander around crying, and I think she's looking for him. Um, when we go out anytime, even if it's just like for a 10 minute period to, you know, walk to the office or something, when we come back, she yells at us. And if we're gone for longer, she yells and yells and yells. And then she needs to be on our lap. She needs to be with us. She's much more needy, much more vocal than she was before. So we are giving her all the attention and all the love that she craves right now. And we need it too. Um, yeah, but anyways, it was good to see my father-in-law. He's also having to adjust now that we're gone. He was, he really enjoyed our company, of course, and having, like he said, it's just good to have people there to talk to, just other bodies in the house. So, um, we left there on Monday, last Monday, shipped out the car on Monday because we are driving the rig, towing the little trailer. Um, so the car got shipped separately. It was supposed to get here today. It's it's in Idaho Falls. It was supposed to be delivered to us today, but they can't find a flatbed truck. There's no flatbed trucks available to actually deliver it to us. So it's looking like, like Friday is when we're going to get that. Um, but yeah, the rest of the trip was really, really good. Like I said, loved, loved seeing the, the area driving up here. And I hope you enjoyed those videos. Um, Let's see, so yeah, got in here Friday. Friday, we met with our afternoon, we met with our realtor. We looked at houses Friday and Saturday. 
Saturday, we um, found the one we wanted. We had been looking at houses on Zillow, you know, for a month before that, so we knew which areas we were looking at, which we were interested in, the kind of house we wanted. Um, so yeah, it's, it, when we saw it, we knew it basically. So we put the offer in Sunday and it was accepted. We close on September 30th, so we will move in on October 1st. So I'll insert some pictures here. It's um, five bedroom, three bath, much larger than what we're used to. Plenty of room to spread around. One of my friends said I could have both a um, room for my yarn and room for my stitching. She read my mind. So yeah, we are so looking forward to it. Um, just really, really thrilled. Um, liking what we see so far in Idaho Falls. We haven't gotten out a lot, of course, but um, yeah, it's, it's feeling good. So in the meantime, got a lot of stitching done, got a lot of knitting done, wearing one of them. Um, so I have a lot to show you. I hope I can get this video uploaded today. I am going to attempt to upload it on the park Wi-Fi, which is notoriously crappy. During the day yesterday, it seemed to work a little bit better. I think because, you know, people were out either doing stuff or at work, kids are at school, so not as much drag on the bandwidth. So I'm hoping that I can get this done in a relatively quick manner and um, that I can get this uploaded for you today. So, one other note before I proceed, Needlework Expo. Um, several of you have asked me, had asked me if I was gonna do a, a video like I did for the one in March, kind of showing you all the stuff. There was no way that was gonna happen, but I did ask Carolyn Zook to do it. Now, Needlework Expo did end today, or maybe yesterday. Um, but if you are interested, if you haven't seen her video yet and are interested in seeing what all the new releases look like so that you can make a list for purchasing down the road, um, I will link her video below. below. Again, see Zook Stitch here on YouTube. Um, she did a smash up, bang up job and I have my list, three of which I just purchased this morning from Wendy because Wendy, who is the designer at from the Heart Needle Art lives here in Idaho Falls. So I texted her and I said, I'd like to buy them and I'd like to buy them directly from you. So we did a little PayPal exchange and I'll be picking those up from her and meeting her in person, hopefully this weekend. We only have one car, so I can't get out unless Mike's around, so um, that's okay. So yeah, I made my first purchases from Needlework Expo. Have you? But yeah, if you haven't seen the, all the, the options, all the new releases yet, go and check out Carolyn's video. Like I said, I will link that below. So without further ado, let's get into the stitching. Like I said, I am wearing one of my finishes. This is the Knights that say neat. Shawl, Mystery Knit Along, Lyrical Knits is the designer, Mary Annarella. So this was the Mystery Knit Along that I've been working on for a while and I finished it, oh, I think, I think on the drive from, we stopped in Fillmore, Utah. So in between Fillmore, Utah and Salt Lake City, or maybe it was on the way here. It might've been in between Salt Lake City and Idaho Falls. Anyways, it is done. It is not blocked. I still have all of the ends. They're all woven in but I won't actually trim them off until I get it blocked. And I won't be blocking it until we get into the house because I need a big space where I can lay this out, stretch it out, and let it dry without a cat laying on it. And I'm gonna have so many bedrooms to do that in. <laughs> so yeah, I am thrilled, thrilled with how this turned out. It is just so pretty. Miss Babs Yummy Two Ply is the yarn. Knights Who Say Me is the knit, is the pattern. I will be getting back to my Wilson Ruana next and hopefully getting that done. That's the design by my friend Kat at A Good Yarn Sarasota. So I didn't bring that to show you. I started on that again yesterday, but I didn't bring that out to show you. 
because I have enough to show you. Now, the other huge finish, whoops, Seasons in Lace, Summer, done in the purple colorway, which was the July Fine Floss Club from Fat Quarter Shop. This is knit, knit, I'm in knitting mode now. This is stitched on 36 count summer khaki linen by XJU Design. This is NPI silk floss, two strands of the silk over two of the linen. And yes, I am thrilled with how this turned out as well. I am gonna insert a photo here of all three so far together because I wasn't going to try and hold them up for you. So um, you can see where the, the three pieces of the, of the mandala meet. I am thrilled with how these are looking so far. Um, there were things that I wanted to say about it and of course it's been enough time since I finished it that now I've forgotten. Let me think. I did use just over I used about a skein and a half of the darkest color, the dark purple. And that again is two strands on 36 count. I believe that my um, pattern says, because I, I have it set to calculate the amount used on 14 count, two strands. And I believe that says 2.3 skeins. Um, again, of the dark purple, the darkest color. It's a little bit inaccurate because that is calculating for DMC, which is um, six strands, a six ply, and the NPI has eight strands in each length. So it does go a little further. So you might be able to get away with two skeins of the NPI of the dark purple. I think if I were you, I'd get three just in case. The other thing I wanted to tell you is um, I, there is a DMC conversion, but DMC's purple range is seriously lacking, seriously. There were no colors matching any of these purples. So what I decided to do just to maintain my sanity a bit was just to pick one of their purple ranges that you know went in a row on the color card and just use that in place of this. So it's the range from 550, 552, 553, 554, and 153, I think are the five colors, 550 being the darkest. It's no way as dark as this dark purple. So what you're going to end up with is going to be a different look than what I have here. It's still going to be gorgeous. Just be aware if you're looking at the sample, at the model, and then looking at yours and say, well, that doesn't look right, you're right. It's not going to look the same, but it's still gonna be gorgeous. But it, it's the only way I could do it without just saying, sorry, there's no comparison. <laughs> you know? There's no conversion. So anyways, this is available, and I will link everything below. This is available on my website. This is available on my Etsy store. This is available at Fat Quarter Shop where you can also get the NPI and I will link those below as well. And this is also now available on the Silk app. So any place you wanna get it, you can get it. I also wanted to let you guys know, I think I've forgotten to mention this for my previous um, design releases. I have started to put in, um, there, you're going to find two PDFs if you buy it either from me on my website or on my Etsy shop. There's two PDFs. One is the full PDF. The other one says on the, let's say, pattern for PK. The software I use now allows me to create a, a separate PDF with everything stripped off except for the chart itself and the key. So you don't have to worry about my, my patterns work in Pattern Keeper anyway, but you don't have to worry about all the other fluff that might get in the way of the pattern loading. So um, if you don't use Pattern Keeper, you don't have to worry about that second PDF. Everything is included in the first PDF, but if you do use Pattern Keeper, you might wanna look at that. 
I also uploaded one pattern, I forget which one, and I meant to ask you guys what you thought and I totally forgot, um, so I'm going to ask now. I uploaded one pattern that had the chart in black and white, which is what I prefer to use. The chart in, because I have all these options available, the chart with the black symbols on the color, whichever is the, the relevant color, and then the third version I think is the, maybe the symbols in color, I forget, there's three versions. Do you guys care? Do you prefer the black and white? Do you prefer one of the colored versions better? Just let me know. It's not a big deal to include the different versions. It does make the PDF bigger, of course, you know, a, a, um, higher, higher um, megabytes. So um, if that's not an issue, if you want to have the different versions, let me know. Whatever feedback I get that's the majority, that's what I'll do. It, it doesn't matter to me. So anyways, Seasons in Lace Summer is done. I will be, I plan to have Seasons in Lace Autumn done by the end of November. I had been planning on using the um, November Silk Pack, which is yellows. I still am going to use that, but I think I'm going to combine it with what I showed you in my last video, which was the... June. The one that was the burnt sienna, the different browns, um, raw sienna, whatever it was. Um, I think I'm going to use some of those with the yellows as long as it still flows just to give it more richness. I love the colors in that pack. So anyways, I will start designing that probably um, towards the end of October so I can get it stitched and ready by the end of November. So there is that. other stitching. Stitching all kinds of things. So I finished the Prim Stitch series. I showed you that the last time, right? I started Stitchography, which is another um, stitch along with Fat Quarter Shop. And this is the one that I chose my own colors. So I think this shows the first three weeks. There is a heart that goes in there that I haven't done yet. So this is 36 count cream and sugar linen by fiber on a whim i am loving this color um and i'm loving the colors that i chose it's a little bit shaded here i hope you can see that um they're all dmc i will put the color list below if anybody's interested in my conversion the heart that goes in here with my conversion is supposed to be in this dark blue but i think i might do it in this this kind of pale green instead. I, I think that'd be too much dark. I don't know, maybe I want the heart to show up more. I don't know. But anyways, I'm loving this. I think it's a pretty little stitch and fun and quick, which is always good. Um, the other Fat Quarter Shop, Kaleidoscope. I'm supposed to have been starting the fourth week, I guess yesterday or Sunday, I'm still finishing up the third week, but that's okay. So that's in here, the third week that, that I have to finish up, and then the fourth quad quadrant goes here. And I'm loving this. I think this is awesome, and it is going to look so good. It's going to look so good on my walls. <laughs> my quilt wall. It's not really a quilt wall. I don't quilt. But my wall where I'm going to have my other quilt-themed patterns all together. I don't know what wall, I don't know where, but they are all be together because I think this will this will go really well. So this is 40 count pewter fabric by Picture This Plus. The the floss is cottons, um, over dyes. Michael's Navy is this one. I think that's a week's dye works. The green is a yellow green. It's by Victorian Motto. And this is Caribbean Waters. I believe by Classic Color Works. So yeah, I'm loving this one too. So, let's see. I also restarted, finally, Narnia. And I decided that the, um, move my needle here so I don't lose it, that the sh cream and sugar that I was doing the other one on was perfect 
I think I mentioned that I'm starting in the center. I'm using the cream and sugar linen that I showed you um, in, that I, I'm using for the stitch stitchography one. I'm not liking how the colors are showing on this. So I hope, I hope it's coming through better than it looks to me. So, you know, I had gotten those different grays to re to uh, try out for this floss and none of them really thrilled me. And then I saw on the Linen and Threads Facebook group, the one for the, I think for this year's stitch along that they're doing with the Talavera tiles that, I mean, those are so pretty. So many gorgeous color combinations. But the one person is doing it in um, tonal yellows and blues, navy blue. And I, I don't know whether it's like one of the DMCs or what, what it is, but it's yellows and blues. And she's doing it on a cream. And I saw that and I was like, yes, duh, Th that is just perfect. So I had enough of this cream and sugar for both. So this is this my restart of Narnia. I am starting in the middle this time around. So there's a big flourish there in the middle and then I'm, the squares that go up the, the um, right side is what that is. I haven't actually picked this up in a few days so I hope to get some stitches in on it tonight. So that one. Then on Sundays, I am back to Da, da, da. Get back here. Hoity toity. I still have a goal of finish, finishing this this year. So, I fall in love all over again every time I pick this up. So, let's see. I got that border done there. That's Briar Rose. I got more filled in here. I'm starting to fill in some of the sides. I'm just going color by color and whatever color is next in line, I use that and I fill in every place in this section that has that color. And it's just so pretty. I've still determined I'm going to put 2021 20, over here, or 20 is here. I'm going to put 21 here because, like I said, I still am hoping to get this done this year. Sundays, if I, you know, our Sundays are usually pretty quiet, pretty, you know, we, we try and just take it easy on Sundays. And I can usually get five, six hundred stitches done, if not more. Um, on a Sunday. So, and then, I told you I'm doing a lot of stitching. I got back to Sewing Box Sampler. So this, I hope to have the model stitched and it ready to go by the end of September. Hopefully before we move in, I'll have this done. This one is a little bit more intimidating because I need to put some, some stitch diagrams, some stitch information into the PDF and I can't do that in my cross stitch program. I have to put it in a different program and, and build it, build the PDF. But anyways, I finished the shading on this alphabet here and I got more of this border done. That was just yesterday working on it for the first time in a while since before I started Seasons in Lace, basically, because that, that took priority. But I, I'm not going to work on any other design now until this one is done. Okay, that's all my stitching. I don't have a whole lot of haul. Um, I'm not doing the other segments. I probably won't do any of the, like the Let's Go Shopping or the, um, what's the other thing I do? <laughs> oh, tips and tricks until we get into a house just so that I can keep these videos shorter. So not very much haul, of course, because I was on the road. Um, I know that there is another silk pack from um, Fat Quarter Shop that got to my father-in-law's house after we left, so I'll have to get that. But I did get the um, August variegated silks from Vicki Clayton. 
These are the ones that um, are based on, I think, mostly gentle art colors. So she's named them her own colors, but they are conversions for the gentle arts. She's eventually going to do all of them, I believe. Um, she does have a, a section on her website called Knowledge Base, I believe, where there is a spreadsheet showing what these are conversions for. So if you're ever wondering or if you ever want to convert something, you can look on that spreadsheet and see what she has. Um, so yeah, um, here I go squinting again. Caramelized, it should say caramelized onions. Oh my eyes, oh, I think I'm tired. Caramelized onion, oh, so pretty. I love these. I just, I think these, this is such a great idea. I cannot read these as at all. I'm going to have to put in my glasses. My eyes are not happy. Miasma. I thought that's what it said, but I couldn't be sure. This one is Steeled Nerves. I love the name she comes up with these. She comes up for these. She comes up with for these. <laughs> You know what I meant. Brandywine. The Vapors. I think I'm holding it too close and it's getting blurry. Honeyed Cud. Oh. Strange Brew. I mean, aren't these gorgeous? The beginning ones, people told her which ones they thought were the most popular. Blossom butter. And so that's what she started with. Plus with all the different conversions that she does for different patterns, she kind of has a feel. Rusted cherry. And thatches. Now, I had sent her whenever those of us that said, hey, I really love this one, can you do it? She said, sure, send me a skein so I can see what it looks like. Because what she would do is she's looked online at like different sources to um, get a real feel for the different variations that happen with over dyed floss. But she said, you know, if you have a skein you want to send me, do it. So I sent her Heirloom Loom Gold from Gentle Arts, which is one of my favorites. And I'm, I haven't opened this one yet. And she sent me back not only the skein, and I wasn't expecting this, but what she dyed that goes with it, that the conversion that she did. And this is called Poetry Pie. Oh, isn't that scrumptious? So, love, love, love. Continue to love, love, love Vicky's silks. Oh, she's amazing. The other goodie I got does this look familiar? So if you remember the um, turquoise colored project bag that I showed you in my last video maybe, or the video before, I showed you the inside fabric and it was this. And I said, oh, that would make a gorgeous project bag as well. The maker of these is named Ann Pitt. She wrote to me and she said, Jan, I have enough of that fabric. Stay tuned. She sent me another one. And let me tell you guys, it is awesome. I love that it holds its shape, that it doesn't flop. Again, gorgeous charm. Look at the charm on this zipper. Isn't that awesome? Nice sized and the inside fabric is fun little kitties. And there's Sasha right there my big boy. I don't know whether that would be Nina with him, but you know. <laughs> and again, you're wonderful. Thank you. Your workmanship is beautiful, and I appreciate you so much. The other thing I wanted to mention before I close with the angel card is um, I did start the Facebook group Eastern Idaho Stitchers. Right now, there's just me and Wendy on it. I've invited Beth Daniels as well. She's here. Um, there are so many of you 
who reached out to me and said, oh my God, I live in Idaho Falls, or I live in Pocatello, or I live in Twin Falls, please join me. Um, I cannot invite people unless I'm friends with them. So I, and of course, I don't remember everybody, but please, if you are on Facebook and you'd like to join us, um, search for the group Eastern Idaho Stitchers. And um, I don't, I think you have to request to join. I don't have any questions set up or anything, but just request to join and I will get you in there. And I really want it to be until, I guess I will say until I feel comfortable of having a group meet I think. I don't know how many of you there really are. Um, but anyways, until I feel comfortable enough to get a group together in person, um, I would like the Idaho Falls Stitchers Facebook group to be a place where we can share what we're working on, get to know each other, and really kind of come together as a community. I, I am constantly amazed. Two more people on Instagram this morning, one is in Pocatello, one is in Twin Falls, mentioned that they were in the area. I am amazed at how many stitchers there are here. I guess I thought that because there's not a cross stitch store, although Wendy told me that there was one that closed 13 years ago, but because, um, you know, it's kind of spread out and it's not that big of an area that there just wouldn't be that many stitchers. And there's a ton. So, we're going, to, we're going to become a community. Um, the other news is tomorrow, September 1st at noon, is when the StitchCon waitlist opens for signups. They have decided to totally reset um, the attendance, so they're kind of starting from scratch. So you have to get in and sign up on the waitlist, and then they'll start sending out invoices. I, I think like October, not not immediately but a little bit of a delay um i don't remember the exact dates but i do know at noon tomorrow is when sign up start now i would ask that all of you wait until i can get signed up before you sign up is that a deal <laughs> i know i know we'll get in it'll all work out it always does i also put myself on the wait list for the pacific northwest what does SS stand for? Stitchers something that Acorns and Threads is hosting the beginning of October. That is virtual. Um, so it's full. I put myself on the wait list. I figure I won't get in if I don't. So give it a try. Um, so yeah, I've decided not to go to Needlework Galleria. It, it's just too, um, too questionable out there to be traveling and getting together in groups like that. That's where I am. I think that is all for today. Yeah, it's good to be back. I don't have any giveaways pulled together. I meant to, but I forgot. So next time, I'm get, I gotta get back in the groove, but I do have a card. And God saw that it was good. One thing I do plan on doing once I get settled in the house is to buy some kind of one of the angel prints, I think, from Teresa Kogut. She's so many. You are a child of God. Fear not, for with God anything is possible. A worker just decided to come and start digging at a weed right outside my window. So, with that, <laughs> I will talk to you guys soon. Know that I love you, and I appreciate you being here. Bye-bye.